chronicle the, the exchange traded fund element to the portfolio all the time. Um, I wanted to isolate that section of the portfolios. I think going into 2022, it's going to be imperative for new investors to look at the prospects of passive uh, investing, but also diversified investing. I think with volatility, um, you know, I've been investing a long, long time in my life. And I think investing in these markets right now, as volatile as I've seen them, I mean, we can be up 500 one day and down 500 the next. How do you combat that? Really what you do is you end up diversifying across the broader markets. So you end up hold, holding those markets when they go down, yes, but you also hold them when they go up and it, it really eliminates the, um, the volatility or the prospects that can come from single stock investing. And that if you own the wrong stock and it goes down, it can be really, really tough on you. And uh, it, it, can, it can start to affect you. And um, this reason why I invest a large portion of my wealth in exchange traded funds within my passive portfolio, this represents just a little over half at about $80,449. So a little over 80 grand we've got in the exchange traded funds. They're spread across 17 different Vanguard funds. I talk about these, uh, this entity all the time. They are the lowest cost entity out there. So while you can find success in other exchange traded fund types of, of, of uh, options out there and products, you can find great options out there in the index fund market. They're all very low cost uh, to entry and they're going to win for you over the long term and they're not going to cause you any stress. I mean, you invest in these products. You hold them, you're a participant in the market. Congratulations, you can go on about your life doing whatever it is that you do with it, with your time. And you don't have to spend it mulling over the stock market or, or, or questioning whether or not you got involved in the wrong single stock, why it is that it's in a swoon, multi-year swoon. Most people end up selling out of those at a loss anyway, because they don't have the tolerance, nor do they have the total portfolio diversification to justify that those individual moves usually take time uh, to, to transpire over time to realize the maximum amount of potential out of those investments. So ETF investing speaks to most investors. It speaks to those investors out there that don't know what their tolerance to the market is. Maybe they're looking to define that tolerance. So start, so start small. Uh, start with an exchange-traded fund. Allow your dollars to, to fluctuate allow yourself the opportunity to fund that asset and grow it over time. I've had an immense amount of success in exchange traded fund investing over the course of the last 10 or so years. Um, really, I think the majority of the beginnings of my investing career were dominated by mutual funds. And I learned really, really quick that even in an up market, you know, those, those fees, they really do consume your wealth and exchange traded funds is a great way to enter into the markets at the lowest cost possible. If you can double up and put them into a taxed advantaged account, like a self-directed Roth IRA account, you're going to be winning the battle and you're going to be taking uh, what it is the predominant message on my channel is, and that is to get involved in the markets passively over the long term, uh, seeking tax protection and wealth preservation by the elimination of fees. So I'm going to chronicle a little bit, 17 holdings, 11 of those are comprised in the sector portfolio. I disclose that to you guys all the time. It's just shy of a $20,000 bill on that. I think it's a wonderful way of seeking exposure to all the sectors. I mean, when was the last time you looked at materials as an opportunity to invest in? When was the last time you looked at the entire energy sector as an opportunity for you to gain some wealth? Now, I do double up on two of the sector-specific uh, ETFs. They're two of my favorites. The first is utilities that is represented in VPU. So I hold VPU in one of my large self-directed Roth IRA accounts, and I own VNQ in the other one, which is the real estate uh, sector specialty ETF from Vanguard. Does quite well, 10% clip a year, nothing to shake a stick at. I own it in the Roth IRA to make sure that the um, uh, non-qualified element of the dividends is tax protected within the comforts of the Roth IRA. It just makes sense to me. So that's 11 of them right there, made up in the 20 grand. The remaining $60,000 is tied up in a strategic way across broad markets, okay? So we've got six remaining Vanguard ETFs. The first is a total market ETF. It's one of my favorites. 
probably the best investment that any new investor can invest in as a standalone exchange traded fund. And that will be VTI. VTI is the total stock market index. It's got close to 4,000 holdings in the company or excuse me, in the product. Um, that way it makes sure that uh, the product is diversified. Um, you buy basically buy for each share that you own, you own a piece of the entire domestic stock market. Now this is the US market. This is not a total market index. Returns about uh, an 8% rate of return per year, pays a small dividend, usually about one five, one six uh, annual dividend. But it makes sure that you always have exposure to the total stock market. It's, it's great because it diversifies you. It can be that first ETF that you buy. Um, it's, it's very safe, very passive, very diversified. And I recommend that uh, ETF to anybody that's looking to start the market. The, the lowest expense uh, in, in, in the industry, you cannot scoff at the 0.03 of expense that it costs to own VTI. I own it myself in the taxable brokerage account because it is extremely passive. It's just an element of, of, of passive investing that I can lo own long-term and not be too concerned about the tax ramification down the line because I know it's going to be a passive base in that portfolio for the long term. So we own 50 shares of ETI. It's a great way to own uh, the total stock market. Now, the uh, second total market index is a little more strategic. Owning the VOO allows you to own the S&P 500, which is interesting enough, 500 companies as opposed to the VTI that owns close to 4,000. The S&P 500 is becoming much more top heavy in the top 20 holdings, especially in the top uh, 10 holdings um, with Microsoft and Google and Facebook, names like that that have just really run up in their market caps. It's really heavily weighted to those, those top 10 companies. Um, so I, I find it a little bit more uh, of a strategic placement. I really like uh, VOO as a standalone, just like I do VTI. Um, but, you know, it, it's going to get you a, a little bit more growth, I think, a little bit more exposure to the S&P, and it's probably going to get you a little bit more exposure to this, those top-end companies that weight the S&P 500, those larger companies, Amazon, Google, Facebook, et cetera. So you want to make sure that it fits right in the portfolio. The S&P 500 VOO, again, expense of 0 0.03, fabulous. We own about 75 shares of VOO fills a nice position within the Roth IRA that we have. The next is another Roth IRA position that I have. I already own the S&P through some other uh, uh, employer sponsored, the TSP. I own the S&P exposure that way through an index fund. So I do opt to own more of a, a Vanguard's dividend appreciation fund. And I own that through VIG. VIG is a fabulous fund really those those top weighted companies man that have paid a dividend um, that have grown that dividend over time it has performed absolutely beautifully it's performed on par actually with uh, some of those growth etfs that we all seek out um, and it's done so with uh, exposure to some of the safest companies out there um, so just kind of goes to show you don't always have to be finding that needle in a haystack to win in the market Vanguard's uh, dividend appreciation fund will work for you. I own it in my account. Uh, I think we own about 50 shares of that. So um, doing really well there. We do own one small cap uh, Vanguard ETF, which is VBK. I own that in my wife's account that helps to supplement that VOO holding that I told you about, um, which is the largest 500 uh, for the standard and poor's in the S&P 500. So to, to add a little supplement and small cap in there, kind of helps. Um, I do select the growth uh, aspect of that. You can have the the uh, the VB, uh, which is the blend, uh, or you can have the VBR, which is value. So kind of take your pick. You can take a hybrid mix of both, or you can choose one or the other. I opt for the growth option through VBK. Uh, so kind of an interesting way of playing that. And the final two um, are two that I've added here just as of late. Uh, I just started the mid cap, which is VO. Uh, that is the mid-cap uh, Vanguard's ETF, and then finally the growth ETF, with the, which is VUG, and that's uh, tailored a little bit more to the growth element. I, I thought, you know, I do own a lot of those exclusively, Amazon, Google, et cetera, but to own the ETF as kind of a base and grab some exposure into some of those other growth names that I don't own exclusively, 
uh, I thought was a prudent move um, and a good way of avoiding single stocks uh, in the brokerage accounts that I own those in, both Webull and Robinhood, respectively. I thought that those could be one fund types of, of, of moves that I could just dollar cost average over time uh, and grow smartly over time, which is really the takeaway for Vanguard ETF investing uh, in, in, its, in, its, uh, in its root. Um, it, it really is a way to invest safely, invest smartly, you dollar cost a- or average it over time, you enjoy the low expense uh, over your money, and you're able to become a participant in the market, you're able to do so from a diversified passive uh, perspective. So that's the 80 grand I've got tied up. What is is 17 specific Vanguard ETFs? I roll them out at times through the channel, but collectively from a portfolio perspective, we're looking about $80,449 to the dollar in Vanguard ETF, 17 specific products uh, that we seek exposure to in strategic places in the portfolio and I tell you, it's a wonderful way of investing, stress-free, um, really maintenance-free, uh, low cost, and, and it will just do something over time that a lot of people have a hard time uh, resonating with. And that is actually just making easy money in the stock market by becoming an investor and buying into the age-old philosophy of time in the market is better than trying to time the market. If you appreciate the message, guys, want to make sure and subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Share the message with anybody out there of anybody looking to get started uh, in the stock market. Make no mistake about it. I've mentioned a few products in the making of this video that can absolutely satisfy those beginning investors that are just looking to get their feet wet, but also start on the right path. You don't have to get overzealous. You don't have to try to overthink this thing and win in in the matter of of the short term. Take a long-term perspective on this. The Vanguard ETFs allow you to do just that. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.